Okay, I want to talk about um, excise tax and elasticity. Okay, um, excise taxes are taxes that are extra taxes put on goods and services. Um, the reason why the government chooses to put excise taxes or extra taxes on goods and services uh, tends to be due in large part because of the elasticity or in this case the inelasticity of these goods. Um, goods that have excise taxes on them, sometimes these excise taxes are nicknamed sin taxes like alcohol or tobacco or gas. Um, these are taxes that are added on so they already have federal taxes, they already have state taxes, and there's an additional tax which we call an excise tax. Um, actually there's a history of this in America, uh, the Stamp Act, um, that was one of the major reasons why we had a revolution uh, in seven, the Stamp Act of 1765 were excise taxes on that and that led to um, Stamp Act Congress and, and the, us moving towards um, sort of becoming more unified. Anyway, um, the reason why these you know, taxes are done the way they are is because of the elasticity. And you should have already seen videos about the reasons why goods are more or less inelastic. And one of the reasons why goods are more inelastic is because of there's a higher level of necessity, oftentimes due to addiction, oftentimes due to, you know, sort of our social world, for example, the way our geography is laid out that people need gas to get places, particularly in rural areas. So um, excise taxes are put on um, as a way to, for governments to make money because you're going to see that most of the tax is passed on to the, to the consumer. Um, if it's an inelastic good. If it's an elastic good, it's passed on to the, to the, to the producer. And so it, it really um, is uh, beneficial, um, I should say beneficial, really it's, it's, um, it hurts businesses a lot more if it's an elastic good. So let's look at what this looks like. You can see that this is a more inelastic demand curve, right? And this is uh, graph A here in graph B. You can see the demand curve is more elastic, okay? So we're going to look at what a, um, a tax, we'll just say it's a $2 tax, is put onto a, uh, onto a good, what that looks like. Now, you know that all taxes that are put onto goods come in the form of, um, come in the form you have to pay at the end of it. So it's essentially, it's an input cost, right? So that'd be a supply issue. So um, it's going to, we're going to supply less because the good, um, because it's input cost, right, or a, or a government policy in this case. So here we'll call this supply sub two, or we'll call this supply tax, and then we'll say supply tax here. So you can see on both of them we've added a uh, supply curve shifting to the left because of the government policy or the input cost that goes into this. Now look, here is, we're going to see here, we'll call this the price um, with the tax, and we'll see, we'll do this, this is the price with the tax. Now, right off the bat, you can see that the price is gonna be a lot higher um, for consumers, or actually, we'll, we'll call this price for consumers, how about that? Um, you can see the price of the consumer is much higher with the inelastic curve. You can also see the new quantity, we'll call this quantity with the tax. You can see the quantity with the tax, we're gonna still keep buying a lot more, even with the tax for graph A, because the inelastic good, you know that prices um, have less of an effect on quantity demanded in a more inelastic curve than they do in a more elastic curve. So um, this entire area, right, um, is, and we'll say this is a $2 tax, right, between here to here. This entire, this entire area is the, what the consumers are taking on. This is the consumer portion of the tax, right? Where here, this is the consumer portion of the tax. So now the question might be, well, how much is passed on to the producers? Right, if the consumers are taking a lot here and the consumers are taking a lot here, what are the producers taking on? Well, you go, to find that, you go on your, your quantity T and your new quantity and you go all the way to the original supply curve, right? So what would the price be at this quantity? What would our price be? And this is what the price would be. So we'll call this PP, so the price of the producer, right? And then this is, the price the producer is getting. So if this, if the difference is between this is $2 and this difference is $2, you can see that this is being passed on to the producer and this is being passed on to the producer. So in a more elastic good, you can see that the producer is taking on a lot more of this $2, 
we'll say the producer's taking on, I'm just making this up, a dollar fifty and the consumer's taking on fifty cents of this tax. Where over here, it's the opposite. The more inelastic demand curve, the consumer is taking on more of the tax and the producer is taking on less of it. So let's say the producer is taking on only 50 cents, but the consumer is taking on $1.50. So um, if you were going to know like how much the government's bringing in, so like what's the, the government revenue, all that would be would be how much is being brought in. So QT, that quantity, times $2. Or you can say the quantity... If you want to get fancy, you could say the quantity times um, P sub C minus, you know, uh, P sub P, which I don't know why you'd want to use that instead of this, but you could. Um, or you could make, and even, there's a couple of more contrived formulas you can use, but this is essentially is what this is, okay? Um, so you can see the more elastic, the more it's passed on to the producer and less the consumer here on the inelastic good, it's passed on the consumer. So the reason why governments will put taxes, excise taxes on inelastic goods or more inelastic goods is because in the end, the producer isn't paying as much and the consumer is essentially paying a tax on a good that's really not helping out society anyway. So you're paying a tax to make up for all the negative effects on society. For example, smoking, you know, my tax dollars and your tax dollars go to pay for a bunch of people who get sick and can't afford health care. Now I got to pay for it or, you know, there are a lot of people who think that we should tax sugar a lot more because you've got a lot of obese people out there that have heart disease that can't afford their health coverage. And so now, because they can't stay away from donuts, my tax money has to go pay for them to get a bypass surgery, right? Um, same thing with gas, right? You decide to get a, you know, a giant truck that gets four miles to the gallon and, you know, you're polluting. And so now, you know, you've got a uh, we've got this pollution and I've got a hybrid. I don't. But if i got a hybrid, now all of a sudden I'm getting penalized because this dude's got some big giant truck. So we're passing on the cost of that person in the form of higher gas taxes um, and large excise tax. That's why they do that. Now, if it's perfectly, inela or perfectly elastic, so for example, if this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve and this is the supply curve of tax, you can see that it never changes, right? So here's the quantity and then here's the quantity with the tax. So you can see if this is perfectly elastic, the price doesn't change. The entire cost is put on to the producer and the consumer pays nothing, right? If it's perfectly inelastic, right? If this is the demand curve and here's the supply curve, right? And so here's our quantity and then here's our new supply curve for the tax. The quantity doesn't change at all but the price does, and this price would be the exact same as the tax. So if it's perfectly inelastic, the entire cost of the tax goes on to the consumer. If it's perfectly elastic, the entire price of the tax goes on to the producer. Right? So if we can find a perfectly inelastic good, then we can tax it more. It's one of the reasons why economists think that drugs should be, like, take the moral stuff out of it, that if drugs are legal, drugs have a very, very inelastic demand curve, and we can tax the crap out of it and make a lot of money to pay for the problems that drugs brings into our society, because we pay tens of billions of dollars a year, or maybe more than that, as a society for the problems that drugs bring in, probably a lot more than that, actually. Um, if we don't get any money out of it tax-wise, it's one of the economic arguments for legalizing at least marijuana is because you can tax the crap out of it and you can pass that on to the consumers and then you can use that money to pay for problems that arise because of, of issues and drugs. So anyway, this is the excise tax and elasticity. Um, whether it's inelastic, relatively inelastic, or perfectly inelastic, relatively elastic, or perfectly elastic.